In this video, I'm going to show you how to fold the origami tessellation called Clover Folding, designed by Shutsu Fujimoto. In a previous video, I showed you how to fold three stages. Um, and then I got a lot of questions on how to fold more stages. I kind of gave a rough explanation, but um, I want to really show you how to do more stages. This is a practice piece I did in preparation for this video. And um, the basic concept um, behind the folding sequence is the same, but I decided with this video to also show a small variation. So these two folds look similar, but um, they're slightly different. If you look carefully, you can see that there is um, no extra layer of paper separating these two squares at least not the one that you do have here. So there's an extra layer of paper here which connects them and makes it um, in some ways a bit more stable. But it also um, destroys a bit the visual effect um, of actually having stacked uh, squares. So I showed this variant in the previous video and I thought I'd just take this opportunity to take um, this variant and show that because it gives a slightly more um, 3D look to the model. Now, uh, for these uh, three stages, you had to work with a 16 by 16 square grid. Um, for more stages, you have to um, use a larger grid, and that is you have more um, divisions on the grid. The basic rule is that if you count the number of stages, this is three, um, you multiply that number by six, and then <laughs> subtract two, and then you kind of get the, um, the number of grid divisions that you need. So for three stages, it's six times three makes 18, minus two makes 16. So that's why we had to start with a 16 by 16 grid. For four stages, that um, adds up to a 22 by 22 division grid. For five, it's a 28 by 28 grid. For six, it's a 34 by 34 grid. For seven, it's 40 by 40 grid. That's uh, one common uh, variant I like folding. For eight, it's 46 by 46 grid. For nine, it's 52 by 52 grid. For 10, it's 58 by 58 grid. For 11, it's 64 by 64 grid, and so on. You know, with every stage, you always add one onto it. I folded a 7-stage clover folding and an 11-stage clover folding. I haven't done um, anything bigger, but obviously you can if you have lots of patience. So folding the grid, um, I guess, has its own technique, but I'm not going to go into it in this video. Uh, I decided to show a 5-stage clover folding because I think that really covers all the um, interesting aspects of adding layers and kind of gives you two more iterations. The folding isn't really different than uh, what you do for the third stage, but um, I think it's good to also go through um, two phases of, of adding another layer. The, uh, the grid here is a 28 by 28 grid. Um, I actually folded seventh and then quarters on each of the seventh, but you can go um, uh, forward with that in any um, fashion you like. For example, you could fold a 32 by 32 grid and then just cut off uh, the excess four squares on um, each side. Um, right, and that after that you have to fold some uh, diagonals, some blintzes, and the, the basic rule is if you start with the main diagonal, you will have creases that start in the corner, um, and then after that you always um, kind of leave two of the small uh, uh, grid squares untouched and then you add the next diagonal. This means that you're not decreasing all the diagonals, but only every second one. Actually, you can leave off the very diagonal fold. And if you kind of look at this, you can see that here's a diagonal fold, then there's two squares, and then there's the next diagonal fold. Pre-creasing is going to take some time, so that's why I just decided to skip it. And um, the crease pattern I'm showing you will hopefully help you too to kind of realize what I mean by always skipping one of the diagonals to crease. So I also haven't added any um, um, any drawn in creases uh, because there's just so many of them. The first phase, which is you know just getting that first central square is uh, the same way as I showed in the other video. So if you want to have it in more detail, please go to that video. Um, but uh, I'm going to show this here 
just in the pace that I'd probably usually fold this. First find the center and then mount and fold back one square so that it's off by one from the center and do the same thing on the other side. And then rotate and do the same on that side. Again, kind of try to find the center. I usually don't mark my models while I'm folding. Um, I do usually in the videos, but maybe we can get around it in this video, not sure yet. So then you kind of have this cross. And then basically what you're going to do is you have four squares in the center and you want to have the adjoining small triangles fall onto them. So I'm kind of taking these two edges and folding them together. So it's mountain, valley, mountain. Up to um, kind of having that, um, that's the central four squares. After that comes a triangle and then I'm kind of going to um, pop that up. But really, uh, the other video is probably going to be easier to see. But once you've got two of those, you kind of can connect them with that extra crease. Um, in general, uh, if you fold this model for the first time, go for three stages. Kind of start understanding the concepts. And um, when you've got the concept worked out, then move on to more stages. It is a project that will take you some time. And I am going to uh, just try and show you the most important steps of collapsing more layers rather than walking you through every single step. Um, I'm just going to assume you kind of know the model already. So once you've got that, kind of going to start um, pinching this together so you can start collapsing it. <clears throat> and I'm also going to try and work quite precisely. For this model, I think precision is really important to make it look very nice so that you have squares that basically look perfect. Um, for that, that does mean I like using tools. For example, I've got this um, embossing tool or you can use some tweezers that have fine points, something like that, so that you can really go in there and check that the creases run exactly the way you want. For example, here you can see that I'm pushing out these creases to make a nice triangle pop up. This one's okay already, this one isn't. I'm going to push from the top to get that to go in exactly the right location, push from the back, kind of just getting that paper to go exactly where I want it to. It is going to make a big difference. And once all of that precision is okay, we can start and collapse the first layer. The first layer is different than all the other layers, just because you need to get the model started. The concept um, is the same, which is collapsing those small triangles onto um, a square that consists of four small um, grid squares. So that concept is going to repeat itself, but you know, it's different to actually get it started. And then you kind of have that first raised square, which hopefully looks quite perfect. Then um, we're going to start with the next layer again. This is the same as with three stages, except that you have some extra paper here. Now the difference in this step is um, that we're not going to do this variant that is connected, but one that is disconnected between the squares. So rather than kind of doing this uh, water bomb base um, variant that I showed last time, what we're going to do is very similar to what we did in the first step in that we um, kind of pop this up again to uh, get, well, kind of a water bomb base in, 
in exactly the other direction. So you can see just like here you kind of have that water bomb um, base implemented here, you do another one here. And then you can just straighten that out. I like collapsing all the way to always get a 3D model back. And here you can see you've kind of done this water bomb base with that tip showing up. If you want to look at the back, at the two variants, um, you can see here you've got this water bomb um, as I showed in the first video. And here you've kind of got the water bomb outside rather than inside. So this is kind of the outside water pump base. And then you go around and do that on all four parts. So once you've got all those four, you have the next layer um, of squares started. And here you can really nicely see there is no uh, connecting layer of paper between these two started squares. And then as before, you kind of can look inside and recognize you've got the, the small square consisting of uh, four grid squares and two triangles are already lying on top of that one to hide it and you want to do the other two ones, just as described in the other video. And this, is, uh, this step is the same as in the other video, there's no difference um, in folding this one with the two variants. After a while you get a feeling for where all of these creases have to go. Uh, for the time being you'll probably have to look a bit more closely as to where exactly to go. But if you just take as a reference always finding those four small grid squares that form a square and then ensuring that the other two triangles you're collapsing will cover the other half of the square that isn't covered yet by the previous step. Then just as you can see this is where I try to get precision. You can see this crease is misbehaving. Just push on it a bit and it will pop into the exact right place. And then you've got that and your first square of that next layer is done. And then you proceed with the other ones. So now you have your next layer done. And I guess this is where the video stops in some ways, the other one. So now you can see you have um, two of these strips that kind of end in this point. And in the first, after the first stage you just had one. So the idea is you do the same step as before. Um, first working on one and the other. Um, so in the previous video I was always talking about this house shape to kind of understand where to do the water bomb fold. Um, so kind of with keeping that in mind, do the next step of collapsing. I'm again doing the, um, the variant where you actually have um, the layers disconnected. And when you see that you can you kind of get a feeling of, you know, you can't quite fold the model flat at this point because of that second strip. So what I like doing is actually doing both at the same time. At least getting them both started. So if you get both of those started, Uh, you can kind of make it almost collapse completely if you just let the two creases, the two diagonal creases meet. And then you have this extra layer here, this extra flap. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to form a third strip so that in the next stage there won't be two strips but there will be three strips. So if we open this up and this is the center, so we're going to have a mountain fold left and right of that, and then pop up that um, that tip that you also saw with the other ones. 
And when you have that, you see that, then you can collapse this completely, kind of taking care to ensure that all the creases are in the right, right place. This, so this one needs to be a valley, else it can't collapse. You'll kind of um, see when you try to fold things flat that sometimes paper is in the way. And that's usually because some crease is in the wrong direction. Because throughout this whole collapsing, you're not creating a single new crease. You're just working with the grid and the diagonal creases you did in the beginning. So now, you have this middle strip and these ones started and these ones in the um, in the finishing of these uh, squares for the next layer will also become a strip. Um, in the center you can see you already have a finished square which relates to already having a finished strip. So first continue with an adjoining one. Kind of getting that water bomb collapsed to the outside, getting the second one started to make space for the paper to move. Then first getting that one to point upwards to start collapsing those water bomb Spaces and then get that new strip that will ensure that the next layer has an extra square on each side and get nice precision here. At this size um, of the grid, you can actually work without a tool. Um, but I have worked with, um, with paper that's much smaller um, and add more layers and then obviously the grid is going to be, um, well, consist of quite small squares. And then usually my hands at least are just too big, my fingers will just get in the way. And I did promise I'd try to work as precisely as I probably would for a display model. Not maybe quite as much, but much closer to it than I usually do in my other videos. Um, so the next stage is complete. And then do the other two ones. So now all four sides have been uh, folded in that way. If you look on the other side, you can see that you've got this nice stack of finished squares and then some unfinished ones. So we're going to work on these again. And this really is exactly the same as with the stage before. You kind of see that here there's four small squares that form one bigger square and two triangles are covering one quarter of the um, square each and you want to cover the other two. So exact the exact same process as before follows. The difference here was that you were creating that new strip, but this part is exactly the same. This is actually missing a diagonal crease. I'll just add it as I go along. Um, so when you have grids with this many creases, it's easy to sometimes uh, miss one and um, at this point, I think I'm okay with just adding the creases as I go along. However, a pre-creasing will make it easier to get a precise finish. With practice, you can also kind of do it as you go along. But I don't recommend it. So then you can see, now you've got two of these strips with that tip in the top lying next to each other. And then you proceed with the next area, the next corner.
You will sometimes um, kind of unfold some of the previous work you've done, but uh, not much of it will unfold. Um, and if you do, the, the paper will at least somewhat already memorize where it's supposed to go. So you can just collapse it back. When opening a model, sometimes you open a bit more than you intended to. Um, and it helps to, to understand what you actually want, so you can easily um, refold the things that unfolded themselves. Um, I can just stress uh, that uh, the, at least what um, helps me keep track of where I'm heading is always remembering that square that consists of four smaller squares that are covered by the triangles when you do those um, water bomb bases. And you can kind of see it here again, you've got the four small squares and the triangles that will cover that square when collapsed. Just again getting precision. I prefer uh, using a tool especially when I'm pushing from the back. I like to look at the model um, from the white side still, even when I'm pushing from the back and then it's easy um, when you kind of have something thin um, and not sharp actually. Because you really don't want to harm the paper with your tools. You just want to um, nudge the paper into place, kind of telling it um, where the crease is if it can't quite find that place. And because you're working on the creases you already have, the paper will easily fall into place. Um, if that doesn't happen, you may, might not have made sharp enough creases. And kind of remember when you're folding your grid, the more precise uh, you fold, uh, the nicer the model will be. And the stronger your creases are, the easier it will be to collapse. You don't want to, you know, break the paper completely. Um, and obviously, um, you may want to not have the, the grid as visible, so it's kind of a trade-off. But, you know, um, the creases need to be strong enough that all of this pops into place. So now we've got three of these strips on each side, which kind of signalizes we've got the next stage done. So now we've got one, two, three stages um, completely finished. Um, and this third stage is different to, um, to these ones because this one already had that finishing touch to it. And then you proceed with the next layer. Now, I always like to start in a corner and then start collapsing this strip partly, going over to that one, going over to this one, and then completely collapse the row. That does mean that if you have lots of layers, you have a lot of consecutive strips. So this is the fourth layer, so that's why you have three consecutive steps. So if you're on the 11th layer, you're going to have 10 consecutive strips. Which of course um, makes, uh, <laughs> makes life more interesting with collapsing. But uh, this is the exact same step as before, and here again is the diagonal. I didn't crease, I didn't pre-crease, so I'm just very carefully putting that in to get nice precision, even although I missed it. There we go. And then start the next one. And the next one. And the next one. Till you get to the end. So this is uh, why I thought doing five stages was more interesting, because here in the center we actually have uh, one, uh, one of these strips <laughs> that, is, um, that has neighbors on both sides. Um, which I guess mm, might um, seem a bit different than the other cases. So then, let's have a quick look and orient ourselves. 
here are four squares three are covered already and we need to cover the fourth one so this one undid itself a bit I'm just going to press that back into shape you can see that's covering it and then try to get that collapsed right there so you can kind of see that going started and I'm not touching this too much but now I'm actually going to start and get get that next strip started already because else it's going to be in the way and it's actually going to be harder the one in the center didn't um, unfold a lot uh, which is quite common the ones on the corners are actually usually the ones that will give you a bit more trouble with unfolding which obviously means that you need to refold them and kind of just pressing that paper into the pattern that it was in before before you <laughs> started opening it to add the next stage and then although it sometimes may seem a bit messy um, there's actually quite a lot of sequence in there so now you can see you've got two strips here they are now very short because this is the last layer and then the corners will each add one more strip so you can go, can go over to the next side and repeat that process and then you have all of those done and now we only need to finish off just like before really on the three stages so um, for the finishing tips even in the three stage model I showed that um, variant <laughs> with the the water bomb going to the outside rather than inside so in some ways that step was also explained in the old video trying to get precision here even on the last fold and that's the first one and this is the exact same step as before but because there's so much paper uh, so little paper left sorry because it's right on the edge you can can do them uh, like you can collapse them completely one by one rather than having to do them quite simultaneously because of the paper being um, you know being in the way and be, uh, having to be used by both um, both squares that touch that area and the next one and you kind of go around on all the sides doing that step which is really just like the previous steps the previous layers but a bit easier sometimes when you get confused um, and you may I mean I, I do too um, I kind of advise you to go back to the um, to the stage before you got confused and then work with that again uh, you'll get a hang of, uh, of it with practice at least um, I only understood this model uh, well when I moved to more than three stages uh, because I kind of wanted to figure out how to do more stages and how that really worked and it gave me uh, a much better understanding. I'd done that as a practice before I did the three stage uh, video because I figured to really understand the model um, the best thing would be to actually try and do more stages and once I had that understanding I think it was easier for me to explain how to do three stages. So these videos kind of motivate me to um, educate myself about models a bit more which uh, is an aspect I really like kind of really trying to understand some concepts behind models 
So you will notice that sometimes the step uh, for me goes very quickly and sometimes I have to fiddle around a lot. Um, that's totally normal, for me at least. Um, it's totally normal that sometimes the creases just fall into place and sometimes I have to make them go there and I have to ensure that I don't get confused what exactly I want the paper to do. Um, if that happens to you, you know, it's totally normal. It's, I think, uh, what anyone that does tessellation has to cope with. Kind of sometimes having to um, work a lot longer on the same step than you just did. Although, you know, it's the exact same step, but it takes a lot longer. It's just uh, the patience you also need if you actually do want to have models with a beautiful finish. Um, doesn't mean that every step has to take a huge amount of time, but it does mean that sometimes it will need that extra bit of attention and extra fiddling to get nice precision. So I'm actually quite particular about precision because I decided if you sticked around up until this, uh, this point of the video, you seem to be interested in this stuff. And very often I actually throw away the models I fold in my videos, mostly because usually there's black lines drawn on and, you know, it's, it's not that pretty, it's not great precision. But in this video I didn't draw in any lines and, um, and I'm actually trying to get relatively nice precision. Let's put it like that. It's not... Uh, it's not the, not the same precision as when I'm not on camera, but it's a lot better than <laughs> what I usually do. Because this video is really something for the advanced folder, for someone who just wants to um, see how more stages work, or someone who's, you know, so enthralled with my videos that they have to look every single bit even if it doesn't make any sense to them because granted um, the amount of explaining I did in this video is not going to be suitable for a beginner unless you're a very talented beginner of course. But uh, I figured if you actually want to fold more stages then probably you're a bit advanced in your origami skills already. And then your model is pretty much complete. You can see something's looking strange here. So I'm just going to have a look here. Things uh, folded the wrong way. And this then, you know, is going to go through some brutal folding flat by me. So I'm just taking my bone folder and going along here to make the paper stay in place a bit better. First do that side I think. And then the other two sides just to get it to sort of stick in place. And that one. What you'd ideally probably do is put a heavy book on this model overnight and then it will work even better. But even that very quick procedure of just flattening the paper with a bone folder uh, did really well and now you can see one, two, three, four, five stages, uh, all done. Clover folding by Shutsu Fujimoto, a really beautiful model. And I hope now you understand how to fold more than three stages. Happy folding!